According to the World Health Organization, more than 5 million people are diagnosed with epilepsy each year. Hello, my name is Catherine DeWolf. I am a senior Girl Scout working toward my Gold Award. I have grown up with an active father who was diagnosed with epilepsy as a teenager. I recently learned that epilepsy is one of the world's most common neurological diseases, with around 50 million people already diagnosed, 80% of whom live in low- and middle-income countries. I have always had to know what to do if my father has a seizure, but after speaking with many family members and friends of people with epilepsy, I realized that not everyone has the access to the knowledge and resources to best support and empower someone who has epilepsy. I decided to make that information more accessible, tailored for families, friends, and colleagues of people with epilepsy, because it is not just the person with the disorder that is affected by it, but also those around them. In this particular video, you will be hearing from Dr. Lila Warden, who is a pediatric neurologist specializing in epilepsy, Ms. Denise Brower, the president of the board of directors of the Epilepsy Foundation of Connecticut, Ms. Carrie Irwin, a social worker at the Yale Comprehensive Epilepsy Center, Mrs. Anique Winokur, who has lived with epilepsy since the age of three, and her husband and daughter, Mr. Peter Gilbert and Cosette Winokur Gilbert. I hope that you find their insights and experiences as compelling and helpful as I did. For more resources on epilepsy first aid and how to support people with epilepsy, please visit the links in the description down below. Thank you. So the important thing to remember is that you or I can also have a seizure. So anyone does have the ability to have a seizure if there's enough stress on the brain. So for instance, having a very high fever or having um, an injury to the brain, such as a big fall or a car accident where there's bleeding inside of the brain. We all have that potential to have a seizure in those circumstances. I would say that epilepsy is a condition where a person can have recurrent spontaneous seizures. Epilepsy is a, a medical condition wherein uh, the patient has seizures and the seizures uh, you can be very, very different from one person to another. Epilepsy is um, when someone has had two or more seizures it's a chronic condition um and that you know those seizures um not being uh caused by some known um outside factor like alcohol withdrawal or low blood sugar or something like that i had my first seizure at three it's a neurological condition that can present itself in many ways I think a lot of people think epilepsy is completely debilitating, that people with epilepsy can't do anything, that they can't work, they can't go outside, um, you know, and these things are just not true. A lot of, you know, it's a really challenging con condition for a lot of people, especially if their seizures are not well controlled, but, um, you know, people with epilepsy can absolutely lead, you know, happy, productive lives. A lot of times they can work, go to school, do all the things they need to do. I think a lot of people are exposed to it in the media. So in, in popular media or popular culture like TV or movies and the type of seizures that people see are the whole body stiffening and shaking seizures where people are foaming at the mouth. So what we're not seeing um, specifically is epilepsy. So somebody who has multiple seizures spontaneously without a trigger. And I think that that is equated in a lot of people's mind that seizures equals epilepsy, where really they're a little bit different. The perception that people have cognitive issues, that they need to be limited. And I also wish that um, there was less um, fear and stigma around epilepsy. Um, you know, sometimes, and I think it's unconscious, but I think sometimes people, you know, want to avoid people with epilepsy um, or they're afraid of them, they're afraid to be around them, and it's really not necessary. So in 
movies in TV shows, particularly older ones, you know, from the 90s, for instance, or the 80s, hopefully not the more recent ones, but when people have a seizure, you do see people put a spoon or a tongue depressor in the mouth. Um, and that's not safe. And certainly you don't want to put your fingers in their mouth because the only person who's going to be injured in that case is you. You might lose a finger. But but it is uh, a common misperception that a person with epilepsy may bite their tongue off and swallow their tongue. And that's not true. It's true to some extent that there are people who have seizures and who have epilepsy that is treatment resistant meaning that they're still having seizures despite trying at least a few different medications. Um, and those patients often will have developmental challenges, if we're talking about children. They often have cognitive challenges, um, but the majority, you know, two thirds of patients who have epilepsy have seizures that are controlled with medicine. And then we have to approach it a little bit differently. You have to think of it like a chronic illness that needs to be managed, something like high blood pressure. Um, and in light of that, there are very few things that people with epilepsy cannot do. When somebody first, first get the diagnosis, it can be difficult to hear because of exactly the issue that you bring up of how epilepsy is portrayed as somebody who has intellectual disability, as somebody who you know, requires care in an institution, as somebody who has whole body shaking seizures. But epilepsy is so much more than that. And as I alluded to, about two thirds of people do have epilepsy that is well controlled with medication and they can have normal lives and lead normal lives. So when we first diagnose somebody with epilepsy, everyone's mind jumps to that, that severe end of it. And educating families um, about what epilepsy is, what the cause of it is, and where do we go from that initial first seizure and diagnosis um, is, is something that I think is important and something that's a journey. I called them pillies when I was that little, but I said, okay, I have to take my pillies and I still have my pill box. There are different grades of it and people need support, but it's not that they're like completely incapable of caring for themselves. The reason I wanted to get involved with epilepsy, of course, was because of my oldest daughter having seizures since she was seven years old. She always wanted to be a teacher, and so she's, a, she's an assistant, to, um, and she works also part-time with special needs children. Um, she also, uh, she did go to school, and she got her master's in uh, early elementary, so she, um, she is able to be used in a lot of different positions at the elementary school, uh, but her main job is to be an assistant in the kindergarten classroom. Epilepsy is most common in the very young kids and then also the very old adults. So the prevalence of epilepsy follows a U-shaped curve and we see the peaks in the young kids, so infants, uh, usually around one or two years old, and then it's more prevalent in childhood. People grow out of it, but you can still get epilepsy as you're an adult in, in adulthood. And then when you're older, um, as you're above 60, your rates of epilepsy go up, in particular as you're older towards 70 or 80. In adults, sometimes what we see more often is an injury to the brain that then um, causes the scarring and then leads to seizures. Or for instance, we see scarring in the brain that we, we don't know the cause of, but then that scarring can also lead to seizures and epilepsy. She's starting to sort of break that barrier that yes, I have epilepsy and yes, I can help others. Um, she's a, like I said, she's a sweetheart and she loves to help others. It was just in the beginning, I think she had built up a wall like, well, if I have never been treated as I'm disabled, why 
why should I do things for this disability? But she's pretty active now. You know, some of our patients who, um, you know, say have um, either found the right combination of medications or maybe had surgery and just had a dramatic improvement in their seizures. Um, and, you know, maybe when I encounter them months or years later are just happy and doing well um, and, you know, just living their life. Um, and there's a lot of families who are incredible advocates. Um, for their family member with epilepsy. And, um, you know, not just family members advocating for, for the person with epilepsy, but sometimes, you know, when, when the person with epilepsy, um, you know, finds that strength to, and confidence to become a strong advocate for themselves, um, that's a wonderful thing to see as well. I probably take 30 pills and every Saturday night, Cosette says, it's time to do your pills. And we take out all the, I mean, it's like hysterical. And she takes all of them out. She says, how many in this case? How many in this one? What was amazing about it is what she said is, I don't allow epilepsy to define me. There are a lot of well-known people in the world or over a year, you know, hundreds of years, who've had neurological conditions, whether it was epilepsy or something else, like a famous artist or a famous author or something. And they obviously did fine. You knew them or you've heard of them because of their talent and not because of their physical challenge. I would say as a message of hope to people who are still suffering from epilepsy, if you've tried a few different medicines and you still have seizures or you're having lots of side effects from those medicines, don't think that it's something that you have to live with. You should uh, see an epilepsy specialist at a, a center that has those modalities. So things like diet therapy, things like devices that can help decrease seizure frequency. And there are new medicines that are coming out all the time. So while we don't yet understand why people have epilepsy, we're getting there. We're getting there. And um, we there are new things that we can do, new therapies that we can do every day. I wish more people knew, um, and I was surprised to learn this myself, just how common it is. thing that I wish, I wish that people um, wouldn't be afraid to tell their story. As you go on your journey just and you meet people with epilepsy, just encourage them to get involved because they can make a difference. And um, whether it's a support group or even the walk, because there is a community. Um, I would encourage anybody, whether they know someone with epilepsy or not, um, and they may not even realize that they do, um, but to encourage people to to learn about epilepsy and it's not something to be scared of. Um, we look at everything as a as a, a bonus, not as a as a hindrance. There are support systems and there are support groups and it might seem insurmountable, but and it often takes time. I think that's the other thing is it often takes time to find the right medication, to find the right treatment, to find the right practitioner. Um that it isn't scary.